as you come in the room, if you would, just let us know where you're from. Todd was saying we've had a little over 200 uh, coaches register, and not all those will make it, obviously, and some will come in late, but it's kind of nice to know where everybody's from. And This is so interactive, and we'll get into this more when we, once we get started here at 7, but it's so interactive that you're going to feel like we're actually at a coach's clinic, which is what we wanted to, to find when we were looking for a format. So, St. Petersburg, Florida. So we're up to 21. Uh, we've got two well, minutes to go. I mean, I think we should start right on time. But as people yes. enter in, I mean, everyone, there's always people that will be busy and not be able to arrive right on time. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Brian. Brian Jenkins, Robertsdale High School assistant men's basketball coach. Welcome. And Jen in Chicago, thanks for joining us tonight. And Phil Kay and... Fort Plain, New York is with us. Fantastic. We've got about two minutes and then we are going to start right at seven. I'm going to go right into it and we're going to have a lot of fun and uh, certainly could use your feedback at the end of our presentation here. We'll talk about that too on on how we're going to do that. I know Todd is uh, Todd's all ready to uh, fire a uh, uh, kind of a, a follow-up, if you would, uh, to our webinar tonight, and uh, we're going to make this the best we can, so certainly any feedback that, that you can provide for is going to be outstanding. Uh, as we get new coaches into the room, just, if you would, it just indicate uh, Anthony, uh, welcome, and uh, thanks for, uh, from Nebraska, thanks for coming in. Yeah, we see Anthony, Elias, uh, Donnie, Tre Trevor Bly from Souk, BC. Hello, Trevor Bly. Well done, Trevor. Um, and then we have a guest who's sh on the video there. You can see uh, we have room for up to 15 people. I see that. We can actually see them, and that's great. Uh, we don't need you to turn on your microphone uh, at this point, but in, down the line here, we'll, if you want to, you can. Uh, who is that in the v video there? Maybe type in your name because it just says guest. We don't know who you are. And I can't hear you. We can't hear you. So just maybe type it into the. Uh... Is that Mike? Mike Craw? Is that Mike Craw in the video there? Looks like my friend. Yeah, that's Mike. Mike, uh, how's it going? Mike is joining us from Australia. That's one of my buddies. Uh, there is a bu there's a button under your picture there where you can press the the mic and it's like a uh, looks like a combination lock or a lock and just click that. that yeah, I can hear you, Mike. Mike Mike is an outstanding coach. I sure can. Uh, Mike's an outstanding coach from Australia. Now again, uh, we'll go over the kind of the protocol for the speaking and everything. Do uh, you want to get started, Randy? We're going to get going and uh, go over a few. I certainly do. A few of the housekeeping things and, and the outline and the overview of what's going to happen tonight. Yep. Well, I sure will, and I want to thank all the people coming in. As uh, we can all see uh, on the chat there, uh, indicate where you're from, where you're coming in from, and and who's with you. Uh, it's great to see a lot of uh, familiar names there. Uh, uh, I'm Randy Brown, and I'm really excited to be part of this first ever uh, online coaching clinic webinar uh, with my friend Todd Kozinka and Todd and I have worked really hard to uh, for over a year now to put together uh, a tool a format uh, so that we can communicate with you guys I mean for all the technology out there we just thought it was silly uh, that we weren't able to pull this off and here recently in about the last week and a half we get we got together and we got a hold of some software that was uh, fantastic and so we're on a brand new program uh, I did not pick out the purple and pink. That was Todd's. Uh, that was Todd's idea, not mine. No, it wasn't. Uh, <clears throat> actually, no. We're going to be able to personalize that in time. But we are so excited that you're with us, and uh, uh, I'm coming to you from Ames, Iowa. And I will let Todd uh, introduce himself and uh, tell you a little bit about him. But uh, my background is 30 years in coaching, 18 at the uh, Division One level, 
and uh, just really have always been excited about coaching, about being part of a coaching community and sharing. And when I wrapped up my active coaching, uh, my goal was really to share my experiences and my resources and, and the expertise that I had gained over all those years to help other coaches. And because of technology and the internet and things these days, uh, there was a way, uh, and I worked really hard at, at putting together a website, creating a mentoring program for college aspiring college coaches, and a lot of other things I'm involved in. And this is the latest uh, thing that, that uh, I, I've been involved in with Todd. And so uh, I'll talk a little bit uh, more about you know some of my background and, and some different coaching stops and that. Uh, we don't need to talk about that now. And I want to turn it over to Todd, who is not in Ames, Iowa. Todd? I am not. I'm in uh, Vancouver, on Vancouver Island in Canada, and uh, just want to introduce myself, tell you a little bit about my background, but I don't need to tell you too much uh, because time is limited. We've got about an hour, so I'd like to uh, get this going. But basically, uh, my background is I played basketball in high school in, in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, played at Simon Fraser University in the NAIA. Uh, many, many years ago. Uh, after that, I continued my uh, basketball through coaching, where I coached uh, in Australia, in Germany, in uh, Austria, but also uh, at the college level in Canada and the university level in Canada as an assistant. I've coached at high school. I've coached uh, uh, with my, my, <laughs> my favorite is coaching young kids, uh, elementary school age. Uh, but Mike Craw there, who's who's uh, next to me on the window, like in the Brady Bunch here, uh, he he's a uh, he was one of my good friends in Australia, so I'm, I'm really excited that Mike's actually here. I know that Mike uh, has shared this technology with a bunch of the coaches uh, in Australia. I don't know if anyone else is on from Australia, but uh, Mike, thank you for doing that. So uh, that's my background, and I'll just tell you a little that's bit of, I'll tell you a little bit about how this got started is uh, just just last week, uh, I came up upon this company called Talk Fusion. I, I went to a, a webinar about webinars and I thought you know what this is fantastic we can use this and this is had had been something that uh, Randy Brown and I uh, were talking about as he mentioned and within a day or two I made a website uh, captured some email addresses Randy sent this out to all his people and we've got uh, 205 people that actually signed up for this as right now on the the list I see there's 33 people but that doesn't matter we're gonna get this out to those people I think it's a fantastic way to share you're gonna be blown away by the presentation and the fact that we can play HD video on this, we can uh, take your questions in a Q&A format, and it's just phenomenal. So, uh, enough about me, uh, Randy. Why don't you just uh, pull up the next slide uh, with the outline, and then we can we can go from there before we get get into the nuts and bolts of the coaching. Then, mm -hmm. if if you would share with uh, with us, Todd, a little bit about kind of how this works and. And you and I are still trying to figure this out, but but maybe uh, you know so maybe some tips yeah uh, for our uh, for our attendees. Absolutely, this uh, that we just talked about the introduction, technical details, housekeeping. Uh, Rand, I'm going to let Randy show you some of the different pods that we can use and how we move things around. And uh, but but basically, guys, if you have a question, you can type it into the chat room. Uh, we're going to get rid of that attendee list in a second. Uh, we're not going to necessarily take voice questions at the beginning. But uh, we do have a Q&A uh, platform that you can actually type your questions into. I'm not sure if we're going to use that. The chat might work the best for now. Um, there's also, if you're unsure of something. I'll show that right yeah, here. Yeah, there's the Q&A. And you can just kind of type your question in there and it'll show up. You know, we can go full screen on it like that. Um, you know, and then uh, under the bottom on of every pod in these lovely purple and pink colors you see a menu button if you if you have a question you click it it'll go to a help menu which will open up in a new uh, link or new browser uh, for your questions so that's the technical details and the housekeeping um, what else was there uh, yeah you you will be able to uh, interact fully in this so I mean if you have any questions like I said right now just type it in but uh, that's 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 how easy it is it's pretty basic you just sit back watch learn uh, write your questions down on paper if you have to and then we'll, we'll try to answer everybody's question uh, one thing that that Randy mentioned earlier is that uh, or he, he's going to talk about is that we won't be able to answer every single question that you guys filled in on the on the web page because that would be mean you know a hundred different things so we what we've done is picked kind of the top 
three or four uh, topics, and that's what we're going to cover today. I'll let Randy maybe tell you about that right now. Sure. Thanks, Todd. Uh, I see, and I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention some of our uh, mentoring uh, members, college coach now mentoring members. So welcome to you uh, guys and uh, gals that have joined us tonight. And then welcome to all the members of my website at Coach RB. Thanks for uh, coming along and supporting this venture. We really appreciate it. Our goal basically is to provide for you guys an interactive environment where we can share. Uh, you know, as we all know, this is not uh, the coaching basketball or any sport. Nobody has uh, an absolute lock on all the information and all the, you know, all, all, all the information and, and all the great strategies on how to do it. We all understand that. So, uh, this is about sharing, and uh, I'm going to share a lot with you tonight. And this is the tip of the iceberg. Our goal was to lay this out, uh, no matter um, sort of how uh, uh, maybe how ugly it looked or, or how it won't be it won't be unorganized. Hopefully, but we just wanted to throw it out there just so you get a feel for it. And this really is for you. I mean, this isn't for Todd and I. This is just part of what Todd and I do. His website, Planet uh, Hoops, uh, and mine, Coach RB, and my mentoring and things like that. Uh, we're just involved in this community, so this is for you. This is all about sharing. Uh, there is actually, and I won't go into it right now, Todd, but there is actually a feature on here where uh, I could actually uh, share uh, clinic notes with you, uh, any document uh, that I may have with you, and it'll come up on the screen, and you can just download it onto your computer. Uh, we can also do that with small videos, if you can imagine. So this is a very interactive thing, and and it's uh, it's awesome. We're excited. At the end of our presentation, if you've got to leave early, uh, we're we're going to have a couple of special offers that that we're going to throw out there, and uh, we would like you to uh, hang around for that. Uh, we will do that at the very end. Excuse me, right after our Q and A time. So uh, as you can see, uh, I want to go right into uh, uh, right into our chalk talk if we could and Todd mentioned that we had a lot of we had an awful lot of uh, feedback we probably had we asked our guests to include three things that they would like to see more of and learn more about and so I estimated that there were probably 350 topics that we had to sift through so uh, that that was quite a task in itself and so what we tried to do is is sort of categorize them in terms of popularity if there was a trend and uh, so I'm going to go to the chalkboard here, and uh, we're going to talk about three things. Uh, post defense, uh, there's a set play uh, that, that uh, there's several, several of you indicated that you want to see set plays for easy buckets, and I'll show you one for a point guard. And then uh, a lot of you just talked about on offense just some key things that, that kids need to be able to do early in the season since we've got practice coming, and I'm going to talk about some ways for them to be able to get open. All right, so we're going to jump right into it. And uh, Todd is my navigator here. And so, uh, Todd, I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to come up to the board here and get set up. So uh, I can see some questions here. Uh, uh, Samuel, uh, you, you right now, part of the uh, housekeeping is we're not going to be taking verbal questions audio questions you can type them in um, but we can we can see you there or your video and uh, the best thing to do is just type them in and I can relay them to Randy because if we have too many people talking at once it's it's gonna get confusing so just just one person can talk but you can type those in I'm looking at the uh, chat room and uh, I, I'll be able to uh, verbalize those over to coach Brown um, so I think right now he's just getting the, the his whiteboard all set up. He's just minimized his video for a second. There's Jason Armbruster. How's it going, Jason? Here we go. So Coach Brown, just lowering that camera. We got full screen video here. You guys can sit back, take some notes. OK, 
Okay, Brandy, I can see you. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, we're okay. ready to roll. All right, we're ready. Right. All right, as you can see up here, these are the three things that I thought we'd cover on the board. And uh, post defense, uh, set play, and uh, some tips on getting open. I'm just kind of messing around with my, uh, uh, I'm sorry, just messing around with my audio here. Uh, can you hear me okay, Todd? Uh, you're, you're great. Sounding great. Okay. So we don't, we can hear you, Randy. Okay, great. Great. All right, let's jump right into this. Post defense. Now, I don't know uh, what your philosophy is on whether you want to front the post or what do you want, whether you want to three quarter the post. Uh, but if you're like most coaches, you don't want it in there six feet from the basket. So how do you develop a defensive post play that is going to be physical, is going to keep the ball out of the post. If it goes in there, we're going to be really physical so that they either take a bad shot, turn it over, or throw it back out. And then don't foul. You know, most, most fouls, a good percentage of fouls, occur about eight feet from the basket. So, of course, as good defensive coaches, we don't want the ball near the basket. So. Uh, I've got a term here that, that we've always used called free feet. And I, I think that if you can share terms like this with your players, I think it's huge. Because there's words we understand because we've been to a thousand coaching clinics that they might not understand. And I like free feet because the idea of a post defender is to keep his feet free from the feet of the offensive player. And a good offensive player is going to tangle us up and create seals and, and really cause havoc. All right? So, uh, well, how are we going to do this? Well, we can do it one-on-one -on -one down here in the block with a coach here with the ball and a defender here in a, in a three-quarter front with a hand in the passing lane. We can do that, and you, you probably would be a good place to start just to get the fundamentals and maybe some terminology and some footwork down. Uh, that'd be a good place to start. But then, uh, this four around one drill is, I think, very time tested. There's an awful lot of coaches I've known and a lot of practices I've been to where I've seen this drill. So basically, we're going to put four players around the perimeter while we're playing one on one in the post. So we'll start with the ball right here with the coach. All right, so we're going to maintain uh, a position here where we cannot catch the bat, we will not allow the ball to go in. Now, in this drill, of course, you cannot allow for lob passes because there's no help side defense. You actually, though, can run this if you front. Uh, there's a way to do that, too. Tonight, I'm just going to cover three-quarter front. You see, we got a little bit of glare there. I hope that isn't a problem. All right, so we're good there, right? So we're going to pass it up to the right uh, guard position. Well, here's another word that I like to use. This is a real tricky term too. Move. You tell those tell those big players, move. Well, here's the idea. If every time the ball moves, this player moves or adjusts his position, he's gonna be in good shape. The ball, the ball is uh, reversed here. He's gonna have to move again relative to where the ball is and where his player is. When it's passed again to this wing, same thing, he's going to have to move. Now, you can call it jump to the ball, you can call it sprint to the ball. You can say off to the ball, you can say off to the goal. You can use any term that you would like. Just get one that your players understand what it is, okay, in your terminology. So, the tricky thing, and that's not bad, okay, because that's how we will start the drill. We'll simply start it here. We're going to pass it here, so we're going to jump up and towards the ball here, 
hand in the passing lane, okay, creating this flat triangle here, which, which we always create, the defender, the offensive player, and the ball. So there was a movement here. They had to move. Ball's reversed to the other guard. We have to move, preferably on air time. This would be air time, the time that the ball is in the air between player A and player B. A good defensive players can anticipate and actually get there about the time the ball arrives. Those are the guys you want on your team. And, and if you don't have, have players like that, develop them. All right? So we're here now. Okay? Again, flat triangle. Okay? And if there's a question about flat triangle, just throw it up on your, on your screen and I can talk about that real quick. All right? Pass. The third pass over to the left wing now. All right? Now we've got to adjust again. All right? Getting off to the ball. Move. Flat triangle. All right? And now it gets crucial because this player is going to try to get to that block. And this is where the drill really gets interesting because now what you can do is you can work that a while, stop and take a look and, and, and talk to them and teach them a little bit. All right. But then, and I'm going to go over to this diagram here, but then what we're going to do is we're going to add the movement of the player. So when the ball moves, we move. When our player moves that we're guarding, we move. We have to. When the ball and the player we're guarding move, we have to move in coordination with and relative to those two things. All right. Randy, can you uh, just minimize the video the drill, for a second? We're just at. Just so I can see the chat room. Just or not minimize it. But yes, just, yes, you can. Just want to see if there's any questions. Yes. Um, okay, go ahead. That's fine. You can full screen it again. So we'll start with the ball over here in this wing again. Okay, this is all good. We can do that. We reverse the ball here, and I want the offensive player, all right, to try to gain foot advantage. Okay, we're talking about the defender keeping free feet, okay, away from the offensive player. But this is an offensive drill, too. And so this offensive player is actually trying to beat him up the lane before this post player can move, all right? And we call it a foot war, your feet versus my feet. And big guys playing the post and they're productive with their feet. Really not shoulders, not hips, uh, not swimming through. It's all done with their feet. And so who can get there first? So let's say the defender gets there. Nice job, okay? He tries to take that spot, he can't take it. Ball's reversed. You're gonna move, you're gonna jump off to the ball. All right, now this player may stay here and wait for this pass. And on this pass, then, it's going to be a race to this post-up area right here. So defensively, if you have taught them to get off in air time, I contend that there's no way that this player is going to be able to claim this territory right here. No way. Because you're already off to the goal, you're off to the ball, you're waiting for them, in other words. So what we would want to do now, we would want to meet this offensive player at this point right here and either drive him lower than what he wants to go, where he wants to go, or drive him higher than where he wants to go. But he's not taking this spot right here. Now I know that's a lot. There's really three parts to it. There's, there's the initial just setting up with the ball on the wing and having a offensive post player and having a defender and just sort of going through the, the, the fundamental parts of how to guard that post. Then we're gonna go four around one with no player movement. Then we're gonna go four around one with ball and player movement. You're gonna find out a lot about your post players, both offensively and defensively. Defenders need free feet. Good offensive players need to win the foot war. Okay? They need to negate free feet. They need to get this guy tangled up. All right, and they've got to move on every pass and every movement of a player. So, I think that'll help your post play. You know, it's just like a lot of things. We've got to put a lot of time into it to make sure that we get this, we get these things across to them so that there's going to be the natural slippage. But, you know, there, there's nothing 
there's nothing worse than a post player who will not react to the ball being reversed and then all of a sudden gets face cut and the opponent catches it right in the sweet spot where they want to catch it. You know, that's just, the, the, there's no way that should happen. No way. All right. Uh, the next one I want to show you is just a real easy, uh, somewhat common, uh, much more in the NBA. So, and, and just a comment about set plays. Well, there's a thousand of them, right? Obviously. And you can't run them all. They all look good. And uh, my advice to you would be this. Find one set play that you can run for your point guard. You're not going to run it that much probably unless he averages 35 a game and he needs to get a ton of shots. But one for him. Instead of a catalog, this is just an idea. So you've got two perimeter guys who can really make shots. They create three or four plays for those guys, specifically for them to get shots. Take maybe your three, four, five in there and create three or four more sets specifically for those guys. Because I, I, really, I really think that if you call a kid's number, you say, hey, listen, we're going to run four, and that's our point guard special. Those kids just light up. They think that is so cool. But if we have a whole catalog of plays, 1 to 35, and we're just calling out random, you know, thumb up, Utah side, uh, it, it's a play for anybody. And I think maybe in high school, more specifically, uh, we, we should have plays that specific, are specifically for positions. So you've got a good point guard. He starts with the basketball. Two's going to get open. Three's going to get open. We've got four here, and we've got five here. All right, very simple. We're just going to enter the ball. We'll enter it here to two. Okay, and one's just going to make a rim cut. He's just going to come to here. All right, when he comes to this point, three's going to fill to the top. And we're going to reverse the ball to three. All right, so where's everybody? One's at the rim, three's up top with the ball. And two has reversed it. Now here's what I want two to do. I want two to cut right here on the low side of five, okay? And if he has to get in the lane, that's fine. He's not going to be there too long anyway. Okay, so we're going to form a double screen here, two and five. Four is over here setting up his single screen. And it's just a real basic single double, but I would run it for your point guard. Uh, so three's got the ball. Now this is great because it's up to one. All right. If his player decides he's going to play right here on this side of him of one, okay, it might not be a bad idea to come out four, take the single side. If he plays him even up, he can go either side. He might even, if he's a crafty player with the defender here, he might even take him here, okay, and create some momentum, stop, and come out the double right here. He can do whatever he wants. What's neat about this play and a lot of plays is secondary action. And I won't go into the secondary action tonight, but if, if we were to, to hit one off this double, if he doesn't have a shot right away, there is more screening action. In fact, uh, just just a real quick idea of what could happen. We've got two here and five here, and just send those guys over on a double right here and have four duck right underneath. So it's a play for your one single double. Wherever he catches it, we can have screening action going away. All right? One of thousands. I think probably each time we get together, we'll probably share a, a, maybe a set play or two. So if you want to, uh, if you want to keep that in mind when you're requesting things. All right. The third thing I wanted to uh, talk about up here, I, I think I think it's just so what is perceived by players as so simple, uh, but yet. When you put them out there, sometimes it gets very difficult to do. And you know, when when these players were in third and fourth grade, and we I know we have youth coaches on, so so they can they, they should really listen uh, in that present tense. 
those of you coaching in college understand uh, those years have passed. But when we were in third and fourth grade, okay, we understand that all we had to do, all right, if Billy had the ball here and Jimmy had, had uh, uh, a player on him over here, all he had to do is run towards the ball and catch it. Well, it's amazing in high school and college how many times I still see that. Now, if you could do that and get away with it, you know, that's great. But the games I see, for the most part, uh, at all levels, you can't get away with that. So let's talk about some creative ways to get open. There are a ton of different ways to get open. And I think we owe it to the players that we coach uh, to give them a menu, all right? to give them some variety, to teach them the tools, and then they've got to go out there and practice and in the games and execute those tools. Uh, you can't tell a player, I want you to come down this time and L cut and get open. You know, teach them five ways to get open and just expect them to get open. I mean, that's what they're there for. They're there to play the game. They're there to react on the spot. Uh, I, I really believe that probably the most fundamental way to get open on the wing, and this could be anywhere on the floor, I think I'll kind of concentrate on the right wing here tonight for, for what we're doing, is to simply create momentum to the middle of the floor, okay, and drive the defender into the paint. We call this a V-cut, pretty simple. Okay, but I'm going to show you one thing, I, and, and I, have, I have seen this work. I have seen sixth graders get open on college players by doing this one simple little thing. And again, it goes back to the foot war, and I just love that term. Okay, I'm being guarded here, and I'm going to walk, if you would, or jog my defender into the lane towards the paint. All right. If he doesn't respond, obviously, I'm just going to back cut and lay it in. But he's going to respond, and I'm going to drive him into the paint here. Now, if you can imagine this, okay, this is my right foot and this is my left foot. As, as, as I'm coming into the paint, and I'm going to plant with this right foot right here. Well, the defender is also in here, okay, with a right foot and a left foot. And what I would do is I would get in the gym tomorrow or as soon as you can and I would walk through this with your kids. So this offensive player, if he's going to get open, he's got to win the foot war. If he can get his right foot over the right foot of the defender, this goes, this goes anywhere on the floor for any method of getting open. Okay, He wins. He wins. Could be the slowest kid most unathletic kid, this could be this could be a McDonald's All-American, I don't care. If this player can use change of speed and direction and get his defender into the lane and plant, getting his right foot over the defender's right foot, he wins every time. Win the foot war. So that's basic. Uh, that's the one that, that we probably all taught when we were coming up as young coaches. But, but I think this thing about the foot war is going to apply to everything. Because, let's think about it. If we're going to L-cut, which is another great way to get open, and an L-cut is simply cutting to the elbow and out to the wing. Okay, Think about it. This player's right foot will be here, and his left foot will be here. Where will the feet of the defender be? As he's defending at the elbow. His right foot is going to be here. His left foot is going to be here. Same thing as we just talked about. Well, what if I can get my right foot over your right foot? Okay. Legal arm bar and explode to the wing with a target hand asking for the ball here away from the defender. We win. We get open every time. Why? Because we're the most gifted, we're the fastest. And again, that, that might work in bitty ball, but it's not going to work now. No, because I know how to play the game, and I've taught my kids how to play the game by winning the foot war. Right foot over right foot wins every time. Okay, so we've got V cut, we've got L. Here's, here's, a, 
here's just a, a really easy way for, for players to get open, wing players to get open. And they don't do it much. It seems like we get landlocked. If we start on the right side, players seem to think that uh, I've just got to get open over here somewhere. Okay, not so. Uh, what a good player will do, if he's got his eyes up, he'll look across the floor to his other buddy with his eyes up, and they're just going to signal, and those guys are just going to go swing the wings, and he may cut and set a screen for his buddy right underneath the goal to get him open on this wing as he releases after the screen to cut here and get open. It's a simple swing the wings, and that's just playing. Show them that, teach them that, but then they've got to incorporate that into practice and then get it into the game. Uh, another one that uh, I have noticed as a trend in this game, starting with the NBA, which is where most things start, and filters down into the other levels, it's just posting up. You know, it used to be where, you know, David Robinson in the, in the San Antonio days way back when, would get locked in here down on that block and I mean that's where he was posting up and that's all there was to it. But see our game has moved away from true big centers and it's, and it's moved to guys like Dwight Howard and bigger players who are athletic. But what they tend to do is play in the mid post if you notice in the NBA and they are just as satisfied releasing and catching it here as they are locking into the mid post and say it, saying, no, I want it right here. So all it is, it's a post and pop is all it is. All he's doing is posting, okay, with a target hand and then releasing and going and get it. Now he's going to catch it and square up from about 12 here and play from there. Okay, you see it a lot of times. It's a great way to get open on the elbow too. Okay, you're here. Now again, feet. Think about feet. Right foot, left foot. Right foot, left foot, same thing. Okay, so I'm going to post, and then I'm going to pop. When I work with my perimeter players, my collegiate perimeter players in the summer, we work an awful lot on this. And I tell them that, that, that they can post and pop anywhere on the floor. And it's a great way to get open. So we've got a V, we've got an L, uh, we, we swing the wings and then we post and pop. Now, I know this for a fact, that there is not a player that you have, if you properly teach four ways to get open, that doesn't have the ability, if you teach them about the foot war and how valuable the feet are, that don't have the ability to use one of those to get open. I just don't buy that. I think one of the one of the downfalls and, and one of the errors that we make as coaches is we assume they can get open on the wing. We assume that they understand, hey, if we swing the wings, we'll cause some action and we'll actually move and distort the defense. If we assume that our guys will figure that out, we're sadly mistaken. Let's teach them the tools. Incorporate this into whatever you're going to do with your half-court offense. And you should never have a problem with guys getting open. All right, good stuff. All right, that's it for the whiteboard. There's more to come. Todd, I don't know if we have any questions. Uh, just maybe uh, uh, get shrink, back down. shrink it. Don't minimize uh, it, but just shrink your video. You can open it up a little bit. Okay, we're up to 52 coaches now. Okay. So that's great, guys. Um, awesome. So does anybody, there's Jason, hey Jason, um, does anybody have any questions right now about uh, anything so far that you want to type in? Because we're, we are going to go into, I think Randy, are you going to be going into uh, showing some videos na next? Yes. Okay. If you have any questions, guys, go ahead and type those, uh, type those in there. Carl says he's having problems with the audio and the video, pretty spotty. You know, Todd, I, I, I just have to think that uh, sometimes it has to do with, with our own uh, maybe wireless or our own situation where we are in different locations. I've been on a lot of these.
in the last few years, it, it seems. Uh, Jason, thank you. He says I have perfect audio and, and, and video, so I think maybe what you might do is leave the meeting, find your link, and come back in. And that may solve the problem. Yeah, sign out, sign back in. Also, Mike Craw in, in uh, Australia, how is your audio and video? Fine. Okay. So, I mean, I, I really, like Jason said, uh, I think it all depends on your, your internet connection and uh, where you are. Who knows? There's many factors. But most people, it's fine. Remember also, this is going to be uh, recorded and, and you'll be able to, to watch it uh, perfectly with... Um, on the on the recorded webinar question about the defensive drill uh, Jen and so, Mike Mike loves the play thank you Mike yes thank you uh, Randy for that play so uh, what's the question there Jen while she's typing that up um, why don't we use this opportunity Randy to show show the people some of the other uh, formats maybe move the pods around and show people that what we can actually do with the mm -hmm. file sharing and everything you bet uh, yes we sure can uh, as you can see we can go full screen here if you can handle that full screen with the uh, uh, presenter which is myself in this situation uh, this box here is kind of our presentation box, and I'm going to show you how we can leave that box and, and go watch some video, which we're going to do in a little bit. Uh, this is a neat bar up here, and, and some of you guys have figured out how to click and get yourself on. Um, great. Uh, we have our attendee list, of course. Now, we've got some other pods we can use. Um, we've got a whiteboard feature uh, that you've seen uh, right here. I guess we have it here. And, uh, Todd and I need to figure out uh, what we can do uh, with that. I know there are some, some great things we can probably do with that. I showed you the Q&A. Here's the Q&A. And uh, you guys uh, could write a question and post that question, and uh, we could take a look. We can also do the same in chat, I guess. Uh, the file share is, is fantastic. And Todd, should I just go ahead and and, and show uh, our coaches how this works maybe we can save that for a little bit later because I, I think let's try to answer uh, Jen's question there she says uh, okay um, now that we got got her um, she okay. says while, while doing the drill should the defensive player move to certain positions uh, within the paint she's just not sure what to make the offensive player do make off makes offensive work for position so maybe Randy go ahead and answer that Hey guys, if you can make the chat okay, box just uh, a little she, bit bigger, she, it would be I'm great for everybody. Yeah, can you dra yeah, drag that up a bit? Right? Okay. Make the chat box bigger. Great, thank you. Right up to the bottom of your video, maybe. Okay. There we go. Awesome. Okay, should the offensive player move to certain positions uh, within the paint? Uh, the question is yes. And that's really kind of another uh, discussion because, uh, yes, they should for the drill. Uh, but not necessarily every time the ball is passed should they move. Uh, I, I think sometimes when the ball's reversed one pass, the offense, tell your offensive player just to stay put, stay where they're at. And then when the next pass is thrown, tell them then make, it, make a, a, a cut, uh, explosive cut to an open area on the floor. So, um, you know, I hope that helps uh, short of getting back up on the whiteboard. Uh, that, that would be the explanation. And, again, play around with it. Uh, you know, the great thing about coaching and going to practice is, you know, you'll see something and all of a sudden, you know, you'll say, geez, I, I've never done it that way. That's an awesome way to run that drill. I think I'll do that. So, so change things. You know, be creative. And... Uh, you'll find out a lot about about this drill when you get out there and run it for yourself. So, so okay. Randy, uh, uh, Todd, yeah. I want to go into some. Uh, I was just going to say we got the I'd two like to two go one. Into some video, unless you have something. Two two one there. Uh, we can maybe do that after the video. Uh, Thomas, okay. Has a question: We'll break it down to two two one full court press. Please, <laughs> he's screaming. Okay. Please, thanks. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Yes. So let, let's go with uh, the video. And, and, and that then... would not be for right now, yeah. but we can certainly, yeah. uh, we can do that later. Or... Sure. Uh, I, I did want to respond to Robert about uh, about some uh, uh, blocking out uh, drills. And I don't think it's, it's on the... Uh, menu for video tonight but I, I do Robert have a lot of video because I'm a re big rebounding guy and so uh, in a in a future uh, program that will have uh, or maybe if you're able to tap into uh, to my website because there is a lot of video on post play on my website I think you could pick up some great things in terms of, uh, of blocking out uh, alright now I want to do this I want to, uh, I'm going to stop sharing that, and I'm going to go to uh, some videos, coaches, that uh, I have pre-downloaded into this program. And uh, what I'll do is I want to talk through each of these uh, drills, so you'll be watching, and I will actually be sort of taking you through it. I had the pleasure uh, about a week and a half ago to... Uh, work out a group of players uh, in Sioux Center, Iowa, uh, Dort College in Sioux Center, Iowa. And the first thing I did with both groups, I had a, a perimeter group and a post group. The first thing I did is I said, we're going to wake up our hands. And they kind of looked at me like, what's this guy talking about? We brought this guy in to run a drill called Waking Your Hands. But you know, I think sometimes what we do is we forget about our hands because we stretch, you know, and, and we do all the full body stuff, but I think we have to get our hands ready to play. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking these guys through just a series of things that you can do to get the blood pumping um, in your hands. Now, th there's going to be a theme in some video you see tonight. And there will be a theme, certainly, as you begin to, hopefully, uh, will become a member of my website because there are hundreds of video clips just like this one in 30 different categories for coaches. And what you're going to see is I have a theme of what I call overtraining. And when we move ahead in this wake your hands drill, I just believe we have to make it more difficult than the game. And... I mean, I'll do some outrageous things. Um, you'll see us slamming the ball on the floor here in a little bit. That, um, and I'm, I'm showing them how right now uh, that you'll never see in a game. But it's I want to make it five times harder than the game. And as I coach these guys, what I will tell them, and I did tell them that day. By the way, it's kind of fun to get after a group of guys that when, when you can leave and drive out of town that night and don't have to coach him the next day but uh so here's what i told him i said now if and and they are i mean these are big guys and and playing through adversity and so there's a lot to that drill like there are a lot of the drills that i like to do all right this next drill i'm gonna stop here okay and and tell you first of all that that i have four college players here i have uh, I have two. I have three Division One players, and I have a, a current community college player who uh, we think will become a Division One player. Okay, so I just want you to know who's running these drills, and this is part of my summer workout program. Now, this drill is a because I'm always asked. We have a lot of questions about what uh, show us a good. I need a good shooting drill, and uh, coaches. My comment is this: that there's a ton of drills. And, you know, you can run drills in PE class. A drill is a drill is a drill. But if you're going to run a shooting drill, all right, are you paying specific attention to players getting open before catching? Are you, are you paying attention to where their eyes are? You know, uh, a, a good offensive player never hides his eyes glued on the ball. Okay, are you teaching them about the foot war? Okay, when they catch the ball, what footwork is involved? All right, in them getting into a shot and, and getting prepared to shoot. Uh, what is their stance and balance as they step in? So on and on and on, right? Those are the parts. Uh, so shooting drills are great. There's a, there's a lot of them. Pick one that you like. Pick one your kids like. But just make sure that you're teaching the game along the way and not just throwing out a drill. You know, Hubie Brown, one of my favorite, one of my favorite thoughts of all time from Hubie is teach what you know. 
uh, young coaches, old coaches, you know, we, we really tend to get sucked into going to a clinic and finding something that looks kind of neat. Hey, this, uh, this triangle uh, three-quarter court press, this is really good. Well, it looks good, but if you don't know it inside out and don't know how to teach it, uh, it it's going to be a real burden for you and your team. So teach what you know. And if, if there's a part of the game that you want to know and you don't know, learn. I mean, my goodness, these days, there's nothing. There's no resource. Uh, I mean, there's no part of the game out there that you can't find a, a great resource on. So this is three-man shooting. So I'm just going to let this go and talk my way through it. Almost everything that I like to do in workouts has conditions to it. And I was going to show you the humble drill tonight, what I call the humble drill, uh, but I decided not to. Uh, the humble drill is, is a great three-man weave with conditions. I love conditions. Conditions basically say these are, th these are, uh, this is a small list of things you must do in order to properly execute this drill. Once you've done this drill, then you're out and another group comes on. But the idea of just flying through a drill for the sake of getting through a drill to make five shots, uh, to me, is called pre-losing. Okay? It's a way to already start losing on Friday night. And so we want to win on Friday night, so let's start winning right now. And you can do this in drills. So these are my conditions in this drill. The passes must be between 12 and 15 feet. If it's less than 12, uh, it's going to be a violation, and I'll stop them and we'll start over. If it's a 20-foot pass, it's a violation. I'll stop them and start over. All right? We have in this drill a rebounder, a passer, and a shooter. Now, this is called alternating, and what alternating means is the shooter always becomes the rebounder, re rebounder always becomes the passer, this player right here, and the passer then on the next uh, uh, possession becomes the shooter. So they're, they're switching spots every single time. Every pass that's made, we have to call the name of the player that's going to receive the pass. Building communication skills. That's another condition. All right. Hey, Randy. Can you? Uh, so let's just watch this a little bit. Can yes. You just minimize, or not minimize, but make the video screen small because the video is small anyway, and then we can see everybody. And uh, I'm, I, it was paused before, but okay. now I think that's that's fine like that because you don't have it's not a super large. Video. Good idea. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right, so I'm I'm probably jawing at him right now because of some violation of a condition. And the, I always I love to do this late in a workout, coaches. Uh, why? Well, physically we're worn down. All right, mentally we're exhausted. And I'm telling you, this is so much more about mental than it is a shooting drill. And you can trick them, just trick them. Okay, so okay, we're gonna end up with a shooting drill. We got some conditions. Here's some things we've got to do. Now, actually, I might have let him hand off. I, I don't know why I let that last one go, because that violated the 12 foot. And another staple of playing the game is two hands. We pass with two, we rebound with two, we catch with two. If there's a loose ball, we grab every loose ball with two hands. You know, this is a, so, so how would we run this through? How, how would we know when we were done? Well, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You know, you can say, for instance, this young man out here with red and black shorts, I could say, okay, guys, we're going to play until Brandon's made three shots. Now, Michael can make all of his, John can make all of his, and Brandon may go, he miss, might miss four. All right? He's, we got to play, and we got to stay locked in, and we got to continue to communicate and do everything with two hands and help our teammate make three shots. This could last a while. Another way to do it is to say, okay, once everybody makes one shot, we're done. The next group comes on. All right, a third way to do it is, guys, we got to make three in a row. You make yours, you make yours, you make yours, and we're done. And that's what I like about it being at the end of the, the workout because these guys, they want it done. Uh, but they also understand that these conditions have to be in order. And I don't know, you know, you, you may not think two hands is a, is a big deal. Well, don't use that as one of your conditions then, okay? If, if, you know, whatever conditions you want, 
you can be real specific on footwork too and I've done that too uh, because my, my my feeling is that the players should come in with their inside foot first uh, in, in, in a in a uh, one two step and so a lot of times I, in order to work on their footwork I'll really scrutinize their footwork by making that a condition of this drill and so hey if there's some sloppy footwork no nope, start over we're gonna start over guys and you know what that's like they hate starting over so that is three-man shooting with conditions also I have a clip I'm not gonna show it tonight we can go four-man shooting we can go five-man shooting now can you imagine five-man shooting with all those same conditions that I just gave we've got one rebounder we've got three passers and we've got a shooter now that could get into we might get somebody killed in that drill in fact if coach Sanquist runs out of Johnston he might get one of his guys I see he just popped in up there in the on the video uh, video bar up there so uh, wanted to share that with you because we have a lot of requests for shooting drills which we always do and then the last video I want to show you uh, you may not like this but I'm gonna you're gonna see me again but I really believe in this I almost every time I get a request for topics like this either speaking at a clinic or uh, correspondence I have with coaches on my website or tonight when uh, when you guys send in your your topics coaches want to learn about late game late game strategy so I'm going to share with you just a little video where I talk about having a late game cheat sheet I'm not going to share plays I'm not going to sh share any strategies but I really want you to think about this if you're coaching this game do you have a late game, a game uh, cheat sheet on your bench do I have timeouts? Do I not have timeouts? We've got to go the length of the floor and get a shot in two seconds. All we have to do is get the ball in bounds and get fouled and the game's over. How do my players foul correctly without being called for an intentional foul? This is all late game. Most games these days come down to the last two minutes and games are won or lost by a point or two. So what I want to ask you is, do you have a late game plan? And I really feel like every coach on the bench, and this should be a cheat sheet that every staff member knows inside now. A late game cheat sheet that you've thought about, you've pulled nuggets out from maybe NBA games or other games you've seen or talking with coaches or going to clinics, and come up with what you would do in every situation offensively and defensively to win basketball games. See, we get late in the game and I see coaches panic a lot and they aren't sure exactly what to do. In fact, sometimes they call timeout, bring players over the timeout and they're just making things up on the fly. Wouldn't it be great if you could just go to a late game cheat sheet and say, okay guys, we've worked on this, four seconds to go, out of bounds, on the side, on our end, right here in front of our basket. We've been running Hoosier, let's say, we'll call it. So we're going to run Hoosier. Here's how we're going to get open. Here's how we're going to execute Hoosier. Let's go win the game. If you haven't started, begin developing your late game cheat sheet. Add to it, refine it, and you will find yourself so much more confident to play late game situations. And you're going to end up winning more games. Nice. All right, so that's kind of a neat way to share uh, some information rather than me sitting here and talking about it. And uh, I think that is crucial. So I want each of you that are on the call or listening to this later to think about that. And uh, do you have one? And uh, I, I've seen some great ones. Uh, they're usually, uh, I, I, I'll tell you two things that I really like about different coaches. Um, and their cheat sheets. Number one, they're short, concise, and to the point. You know, they're not nine pages long because you're just not going to be able to manage that. Then the second thing is make sure, you know how we learn from our mistakes, make sure you laminate it. Uh, I remember uh, very clearly uh, one night we had a water bottle uh, spill on top of a late game cheat sheet. And you can imagine uh, how bad the ink. Uh, 
uh, the ink ruined that cheat sheet. So that's the last time we didn't laminate it. So make sure you laminate it. And, and again, use it and, and have your players go through these things and, and have them gain the confidence that you want them to have. So I'm sure we've all been there in some way, shape, or form. So Todd, those were the, the three videos that we picked out tonight based on uh, based on the uh, uh, requests that we had from the coaches. And so would uh, would you like to move into some Q&A or, or uh, wh why don't you show them the um, Todd could you uh, I, I'll just I'll pull it up and I just maybe talk them through this file share this is fantastic this is where a lot of sharing is going to go on in this community uh, with this file share box here yeah I think that's great um, also maybe we can uh, go over that question uh, about the 221 full course full court press um, but but in terms of the file share uh, it's very simple okay. um, you know, we, we just click upload file. It's gonna it'll upload it to this sh uh, screen here, and then everybody will uh, be able to download it immediately. And so, it's a great tool. There you go, 20, 20 positive uh, player characteristics. Did you download? The, did you upload that, Randy, or someone else? Yes. Yes. So. That everybody is free to click the little download file box and you'll see uh, if it's if it's uh, it should be if it shows up that mean it that means it's uh, available um, and then just just go ahead and click save save as mm -hmm. and there you go you've got a you've got a, a free document that you can use and that's the beauty of this system that we're using mm -hmm. uh, from talk fusion and uh, and everybody can do that back as well, Todd. So yes. if there's somebody who who looks at this and says, you know, here's my version of that, they can upload it from their computer and everybody else can download it as well. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Right. So um, that's one do thing. Do I have a cheat sheet I can file share? <laughs> You know, I probably can't get to it tonight, but I will. I, I promise I'll make that available. It's hard uh, to upload. Because I do. It's hard to upload laminated sure sheets. Right laminated sh sheets are hard to upload, I think. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Hey, hey, Randy. Yeah, uh, so neat. So anybody, uh, we have 49 of us right now, and and we can share back and forth. Absolutely. Uh, and and Phenomenal. Uh, Phenomenal stuff. And Matt says that would be great to know the topics ahead of time to have the documents ready to share. Absolutely, we'll be doing more of these. Um, the other thing that's great is maybe Randy pull up that right. whiteboard for a second. If we get a, like a tablet uh, uh, handwriting thing, we could use that that whiteboard in, in rather than just a mouse. And why don't you show the button where where people can actually draw on the board as well? Like just show that visible. Um, and I know that you know it can it can end up being a, a little messy, but we can actually allow participants. Yeah, yeah. So you see that now? Any one of you guys can grab a pencil yep. and draw a line there, right? And I mean, it can be messy, but uh, it just shows you how when we get going on this and doing some interactive plays, we can have other coaches sharing, and uh, that's fantastic. And also, guys, if one of the things. Uh, that we're doing here with Talk Fusion mm -hmm. is is uh, Jason here on the video. Uh, if you guys are interested in, in this type of program for your program, we can we can help set you guys up. It's very inexpensive, and uh, imagine if you're in business or whatever field you're in, coaching. Um, you know, there's a lot of youth coaches here that might be just coaching part time. Um, <laughs> I like chicken. Um, I like that on there. That's that's funny. Look at, a, look at the artistic talents that we have. Um, you, you can actually, and we can put the link up, you can actually Phenomenal, go yeah. ahead and sign up for this. But that's not the, the main reason why we're here. But we're just letting you know we really enjoy this tool. It's fantastic for, for so many applications. Uh, if you want more yeah. information, just let us know, and we'll, we'll send that to you. Phil Newman is yes, would be interested. Well, we can send you, Randy. You can maybe send him your... Uh, your link on that and uh, why don't we get to if we can Randy let's close off that whiteboard and let's go ahead and uh, I've got to leave in about eight minutes or so uh, if we could go ahead and uh, answer that 221 on maybe on your whiteboard mm -hmm.
because I think Thomas is getting uh, getting. Uh, okay, let's go not, back to that. He's getting nervous there. He wants this done. If you go back to your whiteboard, you can clear the whole yeah. thing from the same place, and you can um, make it so that you're the only one that can draw on it, Randy. Right. Or you I, can. I just don't think that uh, the whiteboard is going to. Yeah, it's gonna allow me to do what I need to do. Is the only thing you can go right on the on the on your analog yeah. whiteboard if you'd like. Yeah, that might be easier. You know, I've actually got you know I I actually have materials that I could that I could uh, send. Um, so I think it'd probably be better if if I dealt just maybe with Thomas specifically sure. on that. And again, uh, I haven't shared my email or or much about my. Uh, my website, but uh, I, w I, I will uh, before we wrap up and because I want you to be able to uh, not only give me some feedback, but also to uh, request some things that maybe we talked about that uh, we didn't get to uh, because I have uh, quite a wealth of not only video, but, uh, you know, but uh, written material too. So yeah, it would be a little messy, I think, if we tried to do that. Well, can can answer any questions that you have uh, about Talk Fusion. It's fantastic, as you can see. I mean, we've been on here for an hour. Uh, it's an unlimited capacity for this room. Fifteen people can be on video at once, and uh, I, I think for what we're doing, I'm blown away with the the application for sharing and teaching basketball. Just just for that, uh, I, I mean, uh, fifty people in the room here. Um, I'm. I really am blown away. When 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 um, Randy and I first started talking about this a few days ago, and we saw the potential, we just whew, nuts. It, it's not going to be too far in the future either, to where uh, we're going to have a setup where we can get on the floor and and broadcast uh, on the floor. So instead of the whiteboard, we're actually out there uh, with players, if you can imagine, which would just be phenomenal and that would be a clinic you know uh, in the in the traditional sense that we're all used to uh, okay uh, Jason uh, maybe Jason do you want to chime in at all with with any anything that you want to add about something anything that we might have missed with talk fusion um, what you guys are all going to find and uh, you know, I'll speak to it very quickly because obviously everybody's here for one reason, and that's to have a basketball clinic. Um, as you can see inside of this, this is the uh, video conferencing. There's also live broadcasting, and Randy was just speaking to what they will be doing with uh, a live feed. All they need is a webcam or uh, essentially a camera that will uh, do live streaming, and they'll be able to set it up right in. Uh, you know, you know wherever they end up being and they'll be able to do the clinic exactly like that now not only do you have the live broadcasting and uh, the video conferencing but you also have uh, video email you also have uh, video sharing into Facebook so essentially what could happen here and it's fully integrated so essentially what could happen is Randy could uh, create a video uh, stick it into a template that uh, has Randy's logo on it or or maybe Todd's logo on it uh, mm -hmm. email it to themselves and then share it up to everybody inside of a Facebook group um, so that everybody would be able to see it. Um, so it isn't necessary 100% to, you know, have a time in, in, in regards to having this clinic, although it's probably nice to have everybody together. Also, this recording is going to be a link as well so that anytime anybody wanted to, they could just, uh, you know, sign back in with their name and it would allow them to see the entire clinic once again. Um, so there's a lot of different different ways to integrate this into whatever anybody's doing whether it be coaching whether it be uh, real estate insurance uh, I mean I've seen so many different people from so many different walks of life all different skill sets and levels using this uh, you know to train people across the country across the world um, and, and at the same time to sometimes just keep in touch with some friends so there's there's a lot of different aspects uh, of talk fusion that people can use um, and then um, and, and this isn't really uh, you know uh, maybe uh, the place 
uh, for this right now, but I don't know uh, if any of you would uh, would also be interested inside of Talk Fusion. There also is an affiliate program. So um, if you share it with people that you know, uh, then you can make commissions off of that as well, uh, if that's something that you'd be interested in. So uh, I, I think unless somebody has some specific questions for me about the technology, you know, I'll just pass it back to you guys. Yeah, thanks, Jason. I uh, appreciate that. Samuel, you don't have to officially register. Uh, you can sign sign as a guest every time. Um, but it, we're just talking about if you want to use this for your for your own personal use. That's what we're talking about. But uh, Randy, I'm going to have to leave right now. And Jason uh, and Todd, and, I did have a question. Okay. And and uh, you can ask Jason. I'm going to keep yep. recording this. Uh, all the other guests out there, there's 41 left right now. Uh, thank you guys very much for being here. Tonight we're going to do more of these. Yeah. I hope that you got something out of it. I think that you would have, uh, and and also uh, you would have been imp impressed with this technology. It's a great way for sharing and teaching and learning. So uh, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, we're going to make this the link, uh, the recording available as a link, as Jason said, and uh, we'll be seeing you again really soon, and we'll be uh, having a few more of these as well. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Todd. I've got a few links I want to throw up on the chat there uh, for our coaches. Uh, I want to take this opportunity uh, again to thank everybody, but in particular, I, I just want to uh, shout out to uh, the the uh, mentoring uh, members. Uh, you know, I I have uh, I have got such uh, a joy and fulfillment out of working with young coaches all over the country and I work with coaches in terms of the X's and O's and things we covered tonight but I really have a passion for working uh, with those who are either aspiring or current college basketball coaches and our program College Coach Now uh, is the number one coach mentoring program in the country we currently have uh, and this is this is not only for if I'm speaking um, to you when I say this that is great because I want to hear from you and, and fill you in on exactly what we're doing because we're doing some fantastic things if you know someone who just doesn't know how to get started and has an interest please refer them to me you know the crazy thing about it is that becoming a college coach in, in any sport uh, there's no manual for it there's no college course you can take for it you just literally have to figure it out on your own well the best way to figure it out is to go to those who have done what you want to do and that's the same in in any walk of life and in any profession well that's really my impetus behind creating this mentoring program because uh, I'm taking my vast network of coaches that I know throughout the country and high school college and the NBA and making those guys available to the young coaches who come aboard with me in College Coach now and work with me. We currently have 42 active members in this community and they're all making huge strides. And we deal a lot with networking, but we do a, deal a lot with goal setting. We deal a lot with creating action steps and creating a strategic plan to help them get from where they are now to where they want to get. And this format actually uh, we have not used for College Coach now, but I know Sam's on the Sam's eating pizza there. Is that good, Sam? That looks really good. I'm starving. Uh, we're going to start using this in our mentoring community, and I think it's going to be fantastic for for what we do. So I, I just wanted to make sure that that you guys understood that that that's a part of what I do, College Coach now, and uh, I love it. And if you're interested, I would love to hear from you and, and get you going. There's, there's not anything like it in the country, I can promise you that. Uh, our la the last two live guests we've had on, by the way, have been B.J. Hill, the head basketball coach at University of Northern Colorado, who uh, I actually have a one-to-one -one mentoring relationship with. And uh, he's doing a fantastic job in his second year at UNC. And then, then Billy Donlan, the, uh, uh, an excellent young coach at Wright State University, was our guest last week. And so I, I bring the best guests in the country. We've had many, many NBA player, or many, many NBA coaches and scouts and personnel on. Um, probably 50 or 60 programs we've done over the last three and a half to four years. So 
outstanding stuff. So I gave you the link to um, uh, the page where you can go on my website to find information on College Coach Now. And uh, also, if you are interested, I'm going to post a three-minute video that I would like to have you watch. It'll take you three minutes, and I think in three minutes you're going to know whether this is the kind of program for you or this is not a kind of program for you. So that's my challenge to you. Take three minutes and take a look at that. There's the link right there. And then the other thing I wanted to share with you is uh, because you have taken the time to come on this webinar and join us, fantastic first time out I, I just hope that it's provided the kind of quality that I think it has uh, I want to let you know also that uh, because of working with Vidstructor I've been able to uh, put together a website that's video driven I mentioned before that Coach RB the website uh, has over has hundreds of video clips like the one you saw tonight and coaching resources in 30 different categories uh, we charge a whopping five dollars a month for access to all of that and we also have a forty nine dollar uh, annual fee and what I'm gonna do tonight for the coaches out there uh, by the way that's all free to to the mentor or to my mentees to those that I work with in college coach now that's a that's a freebie uh, but I've got a special offer so I'm gonna throw this out for um, uh, for the just forty forty five dollars um, uh, for a yearly membership, it's normally fifty, and then I'm going to throw in two ebooks that I've written. They're both about fifty pages, so you're going to get over a hundred pages uh, of Q and A. One's a Q and A book on practice and game management. The other one is a Q and A. These are questions that I've that I've got through the years from coaches, and the other one's just strictly on offense. I'm going to throw in those two ebooks. If you click that link. Uh, you can go to my website, sign up for an annual membership, and uh, so I took a little bit off a discounted rate, and I'm also going to throw in the two ebooks. Uh, it I, I wouldn't promote this unless I thought uh, and I knew for sure that this was going to produce and and uh, give you the kind of value that I know coaches want. There's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of places to go for information. Uh, we all know there's good and there's bad, so. Would love to have you come aboard. We've got about 125 members now at Coach RB. I believe now we've got up to, I believe, seven Division One programs uh, that are members, uh, s some other junior college programs, and then many, many high school, uh, junior high, and youth coaches. So uh, with that, uh, I think what I'll do is wrap up. We've been going an hour and, and 16 minutes, and uh, I've given you the links I wanted to give you. Uh, my email address, it seems like I spend most of the day responding to email, I would love to hear from you, is simply rb at coachrb.com, and I'd love to hear from you. I know Todd and I are going to follow up uh, because we've got everybody's email and contact information. We're going to follow up with you. We're going to include a link to tonight's program that you could keep and store and watch again. You could share it with other uh, with other coaching buddies, and then uh, we're, we'll also add some kind of a feedback component because we really, really need to hear from you because we want to make this the absolute best that we can for you. And I know there's going to be others that are going to try to jump on this uh, online coaching clinic bandwagon. There have been some in the past. I'm not sure of the quality. We're going to make this the best out there. I'll promise you. Uh, if you can imagine. Uh, all the coaches out there that we have the ability to contact that can simply sit in their office, plug in uh, with a webcam at their desk, and we're talking about college and, and NBA coaches, to visit with you guys in this type of, of environment. Uh, the sky's the limit. This is fantastic what we can do. So I need your questions. I need your comments. Um, I love negative feedback uh, because it can only, only help us get better. So with that, I think I'll close up the meeting and end our recording. I just want to thanks, uh, thank you guys so much. Wondering when the next one is. Uh, I don't know, maybe tomorrow night. We will let you know, okay? There's one thing I do is, is I'm very active on Twitter and I'm very active with my, uh, with my website and emails and I will make sure that you know exactly what we're up to and when we're going to broadcast next. And uh, please pass on the word. If this has been a value to you, if you think this is a cool thing, you learned something, 
uh, then go get 10 people and have them jump on too. I appreciate all these comments that everybody's coming in with. Thanks so much. So I'm going to sign off, and I will see you soon, and we will do it again. So take care. Have a great night, everybody.